So, ladies and gents, it is time for a bit of a sort of overview, uh, review, comments, discussion, whatever you want to call it, about the PlayStation 4. I've been playing the console now for, I don't know, the past sort of two, three hours, so I've got a bit of a feel for it. I've tested various things, looked at the interfaces, looked at what it can do, what it can't do, etc, etc, etc. So what I thought I'd do is um, a sort of do an overview, uh, review discussion. Um, and much in the same vein that I did uh, with the Xbox One. So, I've got a list of things here to go through. I've got a bit more structure here this time. So, so we'll go through various sort of key elements really of the PlayStation 4 and this is and this is my feedback, my opinion, it's it, it's not it's not de facto, it is just my opinion. Right, PlayStation 4 console. And uh, now obviously on my previous video I showed you what the console looked like. Um, so let's have a little bit of a sort of discussion about around the build quality and the aesthetics of the console itself. Um, as regards to the look and feel of the console, it was a lot better than what I expected, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. I sort of tended to think it was looking kind of a bit cheapish and a bit, a bit, a bit weird. I don't know why. I, I, again, it was just an impression I had based on the photographs and and the videos that I'd seen uh, of the console. But actually, getting it in your hand, it feels um, a really solid. It is uh, nicely made and nicely finished, uh, but also the look of the console as well. It, it it is a bit it is a bit of a weird styling because it is like a wedge, like I said on my previous um, uh, unboxing video. But it is a very nice console uh, to look at, in my opinion. It feels it does feel quite light. Uh, but again, it feels sturdy. Uh, the only thing I don't like, again, I mentioned on the previous video, was the split uh, sort of texturing on it where half the console is piano black. I don't particularly like piano black that much because it scratches really easily. Um, uh, ones that are, um, uh, that are just plain black and, and, and sort of con um, uh, textured uh, don't show up marks. Uh, anywhere near as easily as what uh, Piano Black does, but I understand obviously Piano Black is is a bit of a fashionable thing at the moment. But 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 apart from that, I I I'm very pleased with the overall look of the console and the way it appears to be built. Um, certainly better than what I expected. Fan noise. Now I had heard that the fan on the PS4 wasn't particularly quiet quiet, not like the Xbox One. I'm playing the game today, sorry, I'm playing the console today and playing uh, Killzone on it. Um, uh, you could definitely hear the fan noise pick up at certain parts of the game, as the graphical content, I suspect, um, and was more demanded. And, and actually I went off and, and, and stopped playing the uh, stop playing it uh, for a while and watch some TV and I could actually hear the fan noise in the background of the TV which okay it's not I don't want to over egg it I don't want to say it's anything like the uh, the Xbox the original Xbox because it's not it's not that loud but it's not as quiet in my opinion as the Xbox one it is louder than the Xbox one I can understand that sort of to a degree because the case is smaller so the fan may have to work harder to keep the temperatures down. Uh, that's one of the real good things about the Xbox One. It's got a lot of space inside obviously there. Uh, Microsoft don't want to go through the same uh, issues that they had with the 360. So that's a bit of a negative for the PlayStation 4 but it's not It's not to the level where it, it's, it's offensive you know, uh, but it is louder than the Xbox One. Uh, the operating system front end, I suppose really the operating system itself, um, all I've really got to say on this is that it looks very clean, it's very minimalistic and it's quick, it's easy to use and easy to operate. Um, it's quite obviously an evolution from the existing PlayStation 3 uh, sort of OS look and feel. Um, 
if you're used to the PlayStation 3 OS, you'll be used, sorry, you won't be used to the PlayStation 4, but you'll get into it fairly easily. It's easy to find your way around, etc. So, uh, in that way, it's a good, um, sorry, in that way, it's a positive, it's a good positive. Good positive, can you have a bad positive? Well, you can't have a bad positive, can you? It's good, it's a positive. Um, functionality. I've mentioned that the uh, that the front end itself is very fairly minimalistic. That appears to be reflected in the functionality as well of the OS. Um, it doesn't seem to be as 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 feature rich as the Xbox One uh, OS. Perhaps that's because of the way it's laid out. It gives that impression because it is so clean and simply laid out. It's not like the Xbox One. Um, that sort of look and feel is totally different but it does seem to be lacking a bit in functionality now obviously the Xbox One console isn't uh, just being sold as a gaming console it's being sold as a central hub for your living room so hence was perhaps that uh, that kind of difference between the two it, it'll be interesting to see how that how that pans out in the future um, I mean I've put here that, that that uh, the presentation is really good on the on the PlayStation 4 OS, and it's certainly functional for what it needs to do, and it's easy to get to the functionality. But I've put here as a closing note: it may be an Achilles heel of the PlayStation 4 uh, platform in the future if it stays around just doing gaming because I think the Xbox One side is sort of looking a bit more into the future and I think that's the way it's going to go anyway, it's going to evolve, it won't just be you know, uh, games consoles, just having a games console uh, in my opinion won't be enough in the future, okay it's absolutely fine at the moment in the future I think um, uh, things will change so you know whether or not the PlayStation 4 interface will change uh, there's no reason why it can't or shouldn't um, uh, update process on the PlayStation 3. There is a 330 meg uh, patch to the OS to take it up to 1.51, I think, or 1.501. Very, very quick on the PlayStation 4. Um, I'd say the whole process from start to finish was actually quicker than the Xbox, which I was really surprised about. Really surprised about. Purely based on my experience of the PlayStation 3 and OS updates, they've been an absolute ball ache on the PlayStation 3. Um, so it was nice to see a, a dramatic change for the PlayStation 4. Hell of a lot easier and quicker. So thumbs up on that one. PlayStation 4 controller. I'm not sure what this one's called actually. It's DualShock 4 or whatever. Is it DualShock 4? Yeah, don't really care to be honest. But that's the new PlayStation 4 controller. Um, it might not look that different quickly, if you look at it quickly, like, like that, like that. It might not look that different to the PlayStation 3 controller, DualShock 3. It is quite a bit different, quite a bit different, and and in a, in a very, very positive way. Uh, the D-pad is just worlds better or worlds apart, country mile uh, difference than the DualShock 3. It feels so much better. It, 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 it's finally the PlayStation might have a decent D-pad. I haven't tried it on a fighting game yet. I really need to try on that to actually see how good it is, but, but it feels really good, which is always a good sign. Uh, the ergonomics of the controller fits really well in the hand. It just feels so much better. Just put it in your hand, oh, without dropping it. Uh, just put it on your hand it feels so much better than the uh, DualShock 3, so much better. Uh, thumbsticks are a lot better. Um, and the actual controller's got a speaker on it. So similar or the same as the Wii U um, uh, controller, or the, or the Wii controller I think's got a speaker on it as well, hasn't it? Um, uh, which I suspect will add to the actual gaming experience. Um, nothing I've got at the moment uses a speaker, I don't think. Uh, not that I've heard it anyway. Um, and it's also got a touchpad on the screen, on the screen, on the controller, which is there. Now you might think, why have you got a little touchpad like that on the uh, on the controller? 
it's used in Killzone and it just provides extra functionality for the controller, you know, to do other things. And just provides another input method and it works fine on Killzone. So yeah, a dramatic improvement in my opinion on, on the DualShock um, 3. So uh, yeah, great controller, great controller. I still don't think it's quite as good as the Xbox One controller, but it it isn't far behind. I was, I, I was playing Killzone on this, and I played Killzone on, the, on this. Sorry for uh, for a couple of hours, and it was it was really nice to use. Uh, the DualShock Three was a bit of a bitch for for first person shooters, but this is so much better, so much more comfortable. So that's a major major plus. Finally, as regards to the console, um, uh, you'd have seen in the in the in the video graphic that I was holding up a PlayStation Vita. Now, something that the PlayStation 4 enables you to do with a Vita is have remote control or remote play. Now, they they had this between the Vita. I think they actually had it on the PSP to be honest. Well they tried it on the PSP and it was just garbage. They had it on the PS Vita with the PlayStation 3 and, and again that was pretty garbage. And they've introduced it again for the PlayStation 4, so either second or third time looking. Um, well Well for starters it works, it actually actually works at a at a basic level, I've got to emphasise at a basic level. So you can effectively remote control your PlayStation 4, and I've actually got this rigged up now on my Vita, where it is controlling PlayStation 4. So that is the new interface on the, v on, on the Vita on the PlayStation 4. Yeah, so what I'm doing here now is I'm, I'm actually controlling PlayStation 4. So if I go downstairs and look at the TV, this will be replicating whatever you're seeing on the screen here. So it works. I mean, all you know that does work. Now, if I just load up uh, Killzone, it's one of the things about the PlayStation 4 to load a game up. Actually, to, sorry, to load a level up on Killzone takes an absolute age. I mean, that's still loading now. That's still loading, saying loading. It takes quite some time, a minute or something, to do a, a level, uh, which is a bit crazy, but but. Anyway, that's by the by. Um, uh, the biggest letdown on remote play at the moment is actually the core functionality of remote play as regards to the time lag. Sorry, not the time lag, it's to do with the jerkiness of the, of the video, effectively. So I play Killzone on this, and it, it's, I don't know what the frame rate is, but it's nowhere near 60 frames a second it can be quite jerky not 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 horrendously but enough to make it a way that you wouldn't want to play the game if you see what I mean um, it's below 30 frames a second it dips below 30 frames a second so that that's Killzone I mean, I'm not going to play it I'm not going to attempt to play it but that's Killzone so if I, uh, if I move around And to be honest, it probably doesn't look too bad on here. Oh, crawl, where am I going? Oh, I, don't, I want to look around, don't I? Now, because of the of the video compression and the frame rate conversion on YouTube being only 30 frames a second anyway, you probably won't notice because it'll look jerky on on YouTube anyway. But but it's not it's not particularly smooth and. Until they sort that out, it's pretty useless in my opinion for remote play. Now I suspect a lot of this is to do with bandwidth, um, because effectively I'm communicating with the PlayStation 4 via Wi-Fi. And it must be the compression method they're uh, using or, or, or whatever, but it isn't as smooth as what it needs to be. It needs to be a lot smoother for remote play to be, to be uh, practical. If you look at remote play on the Wii U, it, it's, it's perfect. You know, you can do remote play. Uh, there is no issue, absolutely no issue at all. But on this, it is a bit jerky. Um, and like I said, I mean, you get away with playing it, but for a first-person shoot, especially in multiplayer mode, you'll get your ass kicked. I mean, in campaign mode, you might be able to get away with it, but but, but why would you want to um, uh, play a jerky game? So, 
I can see the benefit of this if they get it sorted, but they really need to sort out the uh, the comms issues uh, between the two devices. I mean, obviously, what this will come in useful for, um, it isn't just about remote play. It's also about having a second screen for a game, you know, so they can make use of this screen as well as the TV screen to do things and add functionality, whatever. So, so again, they could have have some major benefits in that side, but I think they need to do, uh, they, you know, they still need to do some work on this because it's not working right. It's not working right. Looks cool, but it's not working right. So that's a quick round at really the console itself, uh, as regards to all the key points. Onto the games. Well, uh, the only real game I've been playing is Killzone: uh, Shadowfall. Uh, so again, I'll just go uh, quickly go through some uh, sort of key areas of the game itself. So if we look at the look of it, you know, uh, what's it look like? Graphics, uh, graphics and sound. It is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. Uh, it's 1080p and 60 frames a second, and it looks absolutely beautiful. You know, again, um, uh, stills of this game or YouTube video of this game uh, do not do it justice. It looks absolutely awesome. It looks as good, or it gives me the same wow factor as what Forza 5 did on the Xbox One. You know, it it's as good as that as regards to the reaction that I had when I first started playing it. Um, uh, the environments really really rich and very very detailed um, hell of a lot going on and again I mean this is what next gen is about this is the clear leap over and above uh, the PlayStation 3 and 360 without a doubt and you you instantly see it you instantly see it and again this is one of the areas I was a bit oh yeah well yeah you know, is there going to be that much difference you know between the 360 and and the Xbox One, the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4. Yeah, there is. On games like this, there's a clear, clear difference. Yeah, something about the environments on, on Killzone is that the draw distances and the detail of the draw distance is, is pretty outstanding. I mean, it, it's, it's certainly bridging that, that void that was there before between the uh, PlayStation 3 an Xbox 360 and a PC platform. Okay, I'm talking high-end PC platform. But at 1080p on the on the PlayStation 4, it it really does look stunning. It really does. A playability of Killzone. Now, <laughs> I've read, I've had mixed mixed sort of feed feedback about Killzone. Um, and some people love it. Some people hate it. I haven't really played it that much, if I'm being honest, on the PlayStation 2 or the PlayStation 3. I've got the various versions on those consoles, but never given them any time, really. You know, I've stuck to the mainstream um, uh, first-person shooters, and and I was expecting it not to be great um, uh, based on some of the feedback I had. But um, I'm pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly surprised. It it's it, it's. I'm actually really loving it so far. I really am liking it because it's not just about blowing the shit out of things. You know, it's not like it's not like Battlefield 4. That is all about like you know the full warfare shit. This isn't. Uh, there's all sorts of different things. There's certain puzzles and and stealth play on there and and obviously there is the shooting part of it. But there's other things uh, that you can interact with as well. And, it actually makes it a bit different for me uh, rather than uh, the normal FPS game. You know, I've just come out of out of uh, thrashing the pants off Battlefield 4, uh, just about to start uh, Call of Duty on the PC. So this is quite a refreshing change in that way. And I'm really liking it. I'm really liking it. It is, it is unexpectedly good, that's what I've put down. Overall impressions, really, of the PlayStation 4, very, very positive. You know, as positive as what my you know my feelings are about the Xbox one it, it it's you know they're both really good machines and and if anything you know they are so close at the moment as regards to the games uh, that are available and 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 the apparent capabilities of what they're doing at the moment um, you know there's a gnat's dig between them and if you bought 
at either one of the consoles, you're not going to be disappointed by any stretch of the imagination. And you wouldn't feel cheated either. You wouldn't think, oh, yeah, I've bought the Xbox One, I wish I'd got the PlayStation 4 because it's that much better. It's not. And vice versa. You know, they're very, very, very similar. And if anything, it further highlights that it should be absolutely about the games. I've got to be honest, this time round, at the moment, I do not feel as cheated as what I did when I originally bought the PlayStation 3. That was quite a letdown to me, the PlayStation 3 was. Even initially when I had it, um, I feel more positive about PlayStation 4. I really do. So, I'm really glad I got both consoles. Um, and I'm really excited about the f uh, what the future's going to hold. And hopefully it'll be a really good one, regardless of actually whether you got the Xbox One or, um, or the PlayStation 4. So, hope that's been useful, guys. And you enjoyed the video. And I'll speak to you again soon.